evening visitors and welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Sharon Bowne and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is Wing Commander Greg Williams. We warmly welcome the family of Sergeant Melville Beckman Tyrrell, whose story will be told shortly. We are honoured to acknowledge Admiral Karambir Singh, Chief of Naval Staff, India. Vice Admiral Michael Noonan, Chief of Navy, Australia. Major General Prabath Dematin Pitier, Commander of the Sri Lanka Defence Services Command and Staff College and their accompanying delegations. We warmly welcome the veterans who have served, those that continue to serve, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria, and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family, visitors, and by students on behalf of the following schools. From Queensland, Mary Immaculate Catholic Primary School, Annerley. St. James Primary School, Kuparu. St. Brendan's Primary School, Maruka. And St. Pius X School, Salisbury. If you are able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and he stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that would help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision to which we remain true is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Reeds and floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Sergeant Melville Beckman Tyrrell. Melville Tyrrell was born on the 4th of October, 1921, in Hewenden, Queensland. When his mother, Anna, was pregnant with Melville, her husband died suddenly. Melville would never get to know his real father, but his mother later remarried. Joseph Tyrrell loved Melville and his older brother, Ken, as if they were his own. He and Anna went on to have another three children, Maud, Joe, and Iris. <clears throat> when Anna died, the five children were left in the care of jo Joseph, who was head stockman for the Townsville Ross River Meatworks. After Melville finished his education at St. Joseph's Convent School, he began an apprenticeship as a fitter and turner at the Meatworks, attending technical college at the same time. During the fourth year of his apprenticeship, on the 8th of November 1940, Melville Tyrrell enlisted in the Royal Australian Air Force. Given his experience as a fitter and turner, he was mustered as a trainee armourer. After attending armament school at Point Cook in January 1941, Tyrrell was appointed armourer in late February and soon afterwards joined 24 Squadron at Townsville. On the 1st of May 1942, he was promoted to corporal. Towards the end of the month, he was found asleep while on duty in the early hours of the morning by a squadron leader, and he was confined to barracks for two weeks as punishment. In August, he transferred to 453 Squadron, which was located at Sembawang in Singapore. Tyrrell's previous misdemeanor didn't prevent his continued advancement through the ranks, however. On the 1st of April, 1943, he was promoted to sergeant, and shortly afterwards, he joined an operational training unit at Rathmines on the western shore of Lake Macquarie in New South Wales. Towards the end of July, 1943, Sergeant Tyrrell joined 11 Squadron in Cairns. Initially, sent to monitor Japanese shipping with Empire flying boats, 11 Squadron had been re-equipped with Catalinas when Japan entered the war in September, 1940 and was now tasked with bombing operations, long patrol missions, and mine laying. On the 2nd of September, 1943, Tyrrell was on a Catalina that took off from Cairns on a sea mining operation to Sorong, in what was then Dutch New Guinea. The aircraft landed at Groot Island to refuel before taking off that afternoon. Nothing more was heard of it. The 10 crew members were reported missing amid speculation that they had been captured and executed by Japanese soldiers. Although there were no records of capture, a wing commander of the squadron had obtained information from Kai Islanders about the capture and execution of seven Australians. Further investigation, however, revealed that the executed personnel were not Australian, but American. The final report issued by the RAF in 1946, three years after the aircraft's disappearance, declared all 10 crew members as officially presumed to have lost their lives on the 2nd of September, 1943. Flying Officer James Percival Oliver, Flying Officer Edward Carrington Smith, Flying Officer John Walker Bissett Ames, Pilot Officer Edward Matthew Howell, Pilot Officer Athol Stewart Boyd, Flight Sergeant Richard George Hobbs, Corporal Alexander Burns, Corporal Ian Lott Penrose, Leading Aircraftsman Alexander Henry Crouch, and Sergeant Melville Beckman Tyrrell, who was 21 years old. With no known grave, Melville Tyrrell was commemorated at the Lay Memorial, which bears the inscription. Here are recorded the names of the officers and men who died in New Guinea, on land, at sea, in the air, but to whom the fortune of war denied the known and honoured burial given to their comrades in death. In 2018, a joint RAF Indonesian Air Force reconnaissance mission was conducted to locate aircraft wreckage that had been discovered in the Fakfak in the province of West Papua. The ruins of a Catalina found on top of a small mountain in the midst of rainforest were identified and confirmed as being the missing aircraft. 
Melville Tyrrell's name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my left, among almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Sergeant Melville Beckman Tyrrell, who gave his life for us, for our freedom, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you all for visiting the Australian War Memorial and we wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>